Let's get the context. Genesis 27, 38. And Esau said unto his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Verse 40, and by thy sword shall thy live, and by thy sword shall thy live, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when you shall have the dominion or rulership that you shall break his yoke from off thy neck. Whoso pulleth out this sword of this stone and anvil is rightwise king born of England. Though many tried for the sword with all their strength, none could move the sword nor stir it. So the miracle had not worked, and England was still without a king. And in time, the marvelous sword was forgotten. This was a dark age, without law and without order. Men lived in fear of one another, for the strong preyed upon the weak. Genesis 25 and 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. See, the, during this dark age, the stronger preyed on the weak. Meaning the younger son was the strongest son. And he made the oldest son serve him. Let's get this in Revelation. Now, that sword was given to the oldest son. Um, and the oldest son began to rule. But let's get when did when was he able to rule? It says verse two. Let's read verse two. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shed it up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose for a little season. Verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loose out of his prison. This is when he was given the sword. The sword was given to Esau. 
at this time. After the Dark Ages, that's when the sword was given to Esau. <laughs> All right, boy. Let's have the miracle. Now, wait a minute. Anyone can pull it once it's been pulled. Go to it, Kay. Give it all you got. Put your feet in it. Here now, here, here, here. What's she might say? I tell you, one side of this. Hold on, that's not fair. I say we let the boy try it. Well, that's what I say. Give the boy a chance. Go ahead, son. This boy is our king. Well, by Jove. What's the lad's name? Uh, what? Oh, uh, I mean Arthur. Hail, King Arthur! Hail, King Arthur! Long live the king! <laughs> Revelation 6 and 4, and there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they shall kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. See, this is still talking about Esau because this power, what represents horse, is was red. And Edom means red. And the nation of Edom, according to Malachi chapter 1, verse 4, was the border of wickedness. And Job 9 and 24 say the earth was given into the hand of the wicked, to the hand of the Edomites. It say, and power was given to him that sat, up, sat thereon to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another, and there was given him a great sword. Once Esau received that sword, then he could break the yoke off of his brother uh, Jacob. He could break the yoke that his brother Jacob had on him off of his neck because Jacob was stronger than Esau. Esau couldn't defeat Jacob without this great sword. Esau needed this great sword so he can have the dominion, the rulership, so he can rule. So this great sword gave Esau the power to rule over Jacob. This great sword was a blessing from the Most High. Let's get that in Romans. This is what Romans 13 is all about. It says, let every, verse 1, Let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. See, Esau is in power. He's the ruler because it's been ordained of God. Verse 4, it say, for he is the minister of God to thee for good, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. See, Esau beareth the sword because this is his blessing of rulership. It says, for he is the minister of God, meaning the servant of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. See, he was given this war because Jacob was had done evil, and he received his blessing to uh, be a revenger to 
to give revenge to Jacob for his evil and to minister to Jacob and when he's good. But he if he's was if he is evil, then he was gonna be the sword to put on Jacob. Let me get it real quick. Verse 49, it say, The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar and from the ends of the earth, a swift, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue you shall not understand. Verse 50, A nation of fierce continents which shall not regard the person of old nor show favor to the young. See, this is Esau. His nation was going to be the sword of the Lord. That was going to come against Jacob when they disobeyed. Look at verse 15. They set the foundation. But if you come, but if it, but it shall come to pass, if you were not listening to the voice of the Lord your God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, all these curses shall come upon you. And overtake you. And that. Him sending the nation of Edom. Is the curse. That overcame. Jacob. It's the punishment. Look at verse 44. It says he shall lend to you. And you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head. And you shall be the tail. He shall rule over you. Your brother Esau, he shall rule over you. 48, therefore shall you serve your enemies which the Lord shall send against you. So Esau was going to be the enemy of Jacob. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he, Esau, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee, meaning took thee out of rulership. See, made you to serve him. See, this is how Esau was given the blessing. It was ordained of God, and plus God gave him the great sword to maintain his rulership. Bombs, planes, missiles, tanks, biological warfare, any kind of weapon that he could use, the Lord supplied him with this to maintain his rulership. But I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, by Shem Yahweh Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah. In the name of his only begotten son, who they ignorantly call Jesus Christ. The honors to the elders pushing the truth, peace to the elect worldwide, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, descendants of slaves scattered around the globe. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.